a young boy, Thomas, awakens in an elevator that is moving upward. WCKD marked supply containers are with him. A door above him opens, as the elevator reaches the top, revealing a group of young men and boys, reminiscent of the Lord of the Flies, surrounding him. Thomas runs away, but when he discovers that he's in a little glade, encircled by enormous walls, he stops running. Thomas is given an explanation of the issue by the group's leader, Albie, and his consigliere, Newt. Every month, a fresh boy and supplies are brought to the surface by the elevator, also known as the box. They all refer to themselves as gladers, and reside in the glade. Their names return to them after a few days, but none of them can recall anything about their pasts, or the reason they were placed there. Every boy gets a distinct task. While some are runners, others are builders. When Thomas asks Albie about the opening through the giant wall, he forbids him from going beyond those walls. Thomas begins to develop a connection with the child, who arrived a month earlier. His name is Chuck, and is the youngest among the bunch. When Chuck informs Thomas about a maze behind those walls, Thomas tries to check, but he is subdued by Galley, who prevents him from attempting to enter the maze. Thomas has a celebration that evening. Thomas and Newt have a conversation in the meantime, and Thomas asks him about the maze. According to Newt, every day, a door in the enormous wall opens, and it closes at night. The glade is surrounded by that maze, accessible through the door. The labyrinth is altered nightly. Runners move through in search of an escape route. If someone is trapped in the maze overnight, the grievers get them, and they die. The first boy into the glade was Albie. Nobody is aware of their purpose. Galley invites Thomas to try his hand at wrestling, as he is tussling with another boy. After they fight, Thomas remembers his name, as he strikes his head on the floor. Thomas experiences a dream that night. Though it's filled with flitting scenes, but a lady declares, wicked is good. Thomas is taken around by Albie, to see further sights. The boys etch their names on the wall, when they arrive. They cross off the name upon death. In an attempt to blend in, Thomas is sent to go dig some fertilizer from the nearby woods. Ben, one of the runners who was stung by a griever, attacks him while he is there. Ben says, this is all your fault, as they fight. Thomas runs back to the glade, and the boys put Ben in the pit, due to his aggressive behavior. They refer to the boy's condition as the changing. It seems that getting stung will hurt a lot, and make you more aggressive. They force the youngster into the maze at night, as the doors are closing because there is no treatment for it. The fact that there was a griever attack during the day worries everyone. Thomas dreams of something else that night. More of the woman telling him that Wicked is okay, but he also recalls sitting at a workstation with a girl of similar age, discussing diagnoses, and himself. The following day, Albie follows Ben's way through the maze to discover what transpired. It pours throughout the day. Albie has still not returned, and it's becoming late now. The boys congregate around the maze's entrance. As the doors are about to close, Minu, the lead runner shows up carrying an extremely injured Albie. The door closes behind Thomas, as he dashes into the maze to assist them. When Albie was in the maze, he got stung. To try to protect Albie's body from the grievers, Minu and Thomas hang it on vines. A griever materializes, and starts pursuing Thomas. The grievers resemble enormous bedbugs, that have scorpion-like tails and robot legs. The walls of the maze shift, as Thomas and the griever go about a bit. At last, Thomas manages to entice the griever to move between two clashing walls, and squish. The griever dies. Galley summons the gladers to a meeting the following day. Thomas's killing of a griever has most people thrilled. However, there's another party, led by Galley, who believe that since Thomas arrived, things have changed, such as grievers attacking during the day, and that the regulations they had in place, were meant to keep everyone safe. And speaking of change, an elevator shows up. The boys dash outside to see what the elevator has delivered. There's just a young girl inside, no supplies. She whispers, Thomas, as she glances up, before collapsing. A message saying, she's the last one ever, is in her hand. Thomas should be penalized, according to Galley, as non-runners are permitted inside the maze. The girl's knowledge of Thomas's identity bothers him. He's afraid, that since they removed the girl, the elevator hasn't descended again. According to Newt, Thomas can be imprisoned without sustenance for the entire night, and become a runner the following day. Galley is upset with his indulgence. Galley is even more agitated, when some of the guys return to the maze to examine the griever's corpse. 
they discover a strange apparatus inside, that reads the number 7 on an electronic display. WCKD is also indicated on the gadget. It dawns on the youngsters that whoever provides them also manufactured the grievers. Thomas is shown a map of the maze by Minyu. The maze is constantly changing, with new outer portions opening daily. Every external part has a number. Section 7 was open last night. The girl has woken up. She's hurling objects at the boys below, from the top of a tower. It's Thomas, he shouts up to her. She consents to allow him to speak. She will know her name in a few days, he says, adding that her memory was erased. She claims that she can already recall her name. It's Teresa. She also recalls Thomas. He shares with her the nightmares he's had about her, and a woman telling him that, wicked is good. Teresa discovered two syringes in her pocket as well, when she woke up. Thomas handles his imprisonment, as a punishment that evening. Chuck pays him a visit, and gives him some meals. In addition, he requests that Thomas send his parents a small carved figure, that Chuck crafted. He's convinced his parents remember him and mourn him, even if he doesn't remember them. After returning the statue to Chuck, Thomas informs him that he can give it to his parents on his own. Thomas and Minyu enter the maze the following morning, with the gadget they obtained from the griever. After a while, the device starts to click, and leads them to a new area, that Minyu has never seen before. The fact that the maze appears to be open in all of its outermost sections, worries Minyu as well. When they reach a large area designated WCKD Loading Dock, which leads to a dead end, the gadget changes from red to green, creating a new way. There appears to be a sewer tunnel, accessible via that path. They return to the glade, because the tunnel's borders contain the same slime, secreted by the grievers. Thomas chooses to inject Dalby, who is still transforming, with one of the syringes. In the end, it improves him. Thomas is informed by him when he awakens, you were their favorite. However, we never find out what he means, since dozens of grievers emerge from outside doors, that start to open all across the maze. The griever attack, which obliterates the majority of their settlement, and kills many of the guys. Chuck gets seized by one of the grievers, but he is saved. In the end, they chop off its tail. However, the griever returns, and kills Alby. Following the attack, Thomas learns that the griever stings venom aids in memory retention. Therefore, he removes the tail and stings himself, which helps him remember a little bit more. Thomas recalls that the maze is a test, rather than a jail. He notices that every other boy is in an incubator tube. Many of them are terrified. Like Teresa, he views himself as a scientist. Thomas is cured after the gladers use the second syringe, and he tells everyone that he was partly to blame for everyone's presence. Enraged, Galley and his gang lash Thomas and Teresa to stakes outside the maze's entrance, as a sacrifice. However, they release them as half of the group is still with Thomas. The gladers are now split apart. Thomas informs Galley that he would rather perish in the glade attempting to flee, than not try. Thomas leads a group through the maze. Once they reach the loading dock region, grievers attack them once more. They pass via the tunnel used for sewage, which ends at a locked door. To pass, they require a numerical code. They understand that the coding has to match the order, in which the maze would typically open. After Teresa enters it, everyone passes through a door. All the grievers behind them are crushed by walls. The children proceed down a few halls, before coming to an exit marked door. It is, in fact, just an ordinary old exit door, similar to those found in any office building. They pass through, and find themselves within the lab from Thomas's dreams, and memories. The scientists are all gone. A video begins to run. The woman from before, introduces herself as Ava Page, and informs the children that although they are not aware of it, a phenomenon known as the flare, caused widespread destruction. She was a member of the World Catastrophe Kill Zone Department, WCKD, a contentious organization that thought it could monitor the children's minds and discover a cure through testing. As she is speaking, guerrilla warriors from behind her charge in and begin murdering other scientists. She reassures them that Wicked is good and expresses her gratitude that they passed the first test. Paige shoots herself in the head before logging out. A door opens to the outside world. Galley arrives with a revolver before anyone can depart. They all belong in the glade, he claims. Chuck jumps in front of the gunshot, as he tries to shoot Thomas. Galley receives a stab wound to the chest. Chuck gives Thomas the bloody statue, before passing away. 
a group of people, who appear to be the guerrilla troops from the video, barge in, and drag the children outside to helicopters that are waiting. They appear to be in the desert at first, but it becomes clear that they are outside of a former city. Everything is coated with sand, and buildings are ruined. Nobody questions why the helicopters didn't just land inside the glade, and save the children there instead, as they fly over the maze in the glade. Paige is seen in the last scene, wiping fake blood off her head, and appears to be alive. She claims that the kids have taken the bait. More children made it out alive than she thought. Since the maze proved to be successful, Phase 2 can now start, as the helicopter takes off toward the abandoned city.